What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change the auto color icon layout inside of Reaper. First things first, you got to have the SWS extensions, so go into the link in the description and make sure that they're downloaded. Uh, now, if you were to insert a new track normally, it's going to be a blank track. It's not going to have anything on it, it's going to be a blank color. But if I go in here and I name this something that I already use, like Vital, it's going to change the color of the track itself, it's going to change the logo here, and it's going to change the color of the media item. This can be really handy when you have multiple tracks, as you can see down here. There's multiple tracks set up, kind of helps you distinguish which one is which. You can also have the icons down in the mixer control panel. If you want to have icons show up in your mixer control panel, just go over to the mixer control panel and go to show icons. Now it's going to show the icons that are the same that are over here. For me, I don't use that because I scroll through here. And if I select one, it's automatically going to widen the track. So I always know which track I'm on. That's also another setting that you can use that's in the theme adjuster. If you go to the mixer control panel and if the track is selected, extend with sidebar. And what that allows you to do is add more effects if you wanted to add more slots. So if I select this one right here, it's going to lengthen the sides and it's going to allow me to put in more effect slots. All right, so let's get into it. So if you go into extensions and you go to auto color layout, this is where you're going to be making all your decisions for what shows up. Now, there's three different types. There's the rule types, track, marker, and region. So if I put a marker here and a marker here, and I just change the name of this to a rule that I have set up. So like marker C, it's going to automatically change the color of it. If I select this one and make it marker N, it's going to change those colors. Another thing you can do is create a time selection. So for me, it's just left drag. You can change that in your mouse modifiers. So if you go to your preferences and go down to mouse modifiers, under arrange view, the default action is marquee select and time. Let me double check. Yeah, it's, it's normally marquee selected items, but I also have set time selection. So that way, if I left drag and drag across, it's going to set the time selection as well. Now, to create a region, for me, it's just shift and S. Although for you, um, you're going to want to go up to actions. And if I type in shift S, you'll see that the action is called markers insert region from time selection. So if I hit shift S, which is now my shortcut, I have this region and let's say I rename this to one of my region rules. So if I have a region rule that says B section, it's going to rename this or it's going to change the color to green. So these are all things that are automatically set up. I never have to worry about them, which is super handy because if I'm doing a verse, if I rename this to verse and I'm looking for my verse throughout my track, I always know my verse is going to be yellow so I can easily go through if I had a really long song here. And if you haven't used regions before, I highly recommend it. You can just control and it will copy them. Now, another thing that's really cool about regions is if you have one set up and you just double click it, it's going to automatically select all that time. So you don't have to go through here and select it. And I could go up to right here and go to time selection, remove contents of time selection, moving later items. So if I had this course here and I wanted to get rid of it completely and move everything over, I just hit that button and everything's moved over. I would definitely start using regions if you haven't used them before. It definitely makes life a lot easier. You could also go in the time selection for all three regions and then create a new one and drag over everything. So it's an easy way to build out your tracks just by copying, pasting everything without having to individually go through and select everything. So that's markers and regions. Let's go into actual track layouts, which is a lot more fun. So if you go in and I create that track down here, Let's do a new one that has a ru rule on it. So I have a Breed Love guitar. So if I record my Breed Love, I just record it and rename it Breed Love. And it will even show up with the icon that I edited to look kind of like a Breed Love. If I record with my Les Paul, I can just duplicate that track, rename this one Les Paul, and it's going to change to my guitar, which is a black Les Paul. I also have a Strat. So if I change this name to Strat, then I have my guitars in there. So it just helps you a lot visually. I'm a very visual person. So this is very important for me to have. Now to make all these changes, you're just going to go to add rule and let's create a new one that means nothing, but it's got a name that nothing else has. So let's just do um, Z. Okay, now it's going to automatically alphabetize it. You can also change it so that it, it it's going to rank it by the number. Uh, this number basically means the priority 
basically all this means is if you add two things that are super similar in name, it's going to have one that's got a more of a priority over it. So the drums, if you look here, I have one that says drum and then I have one that says drums. They're two different icons. And what that means is if there's uh, drums listed, the priority of drums is higher than if it just said drum, which is way down here. I know that might sound confusing, but you'll understand it if you start making changes in here. Now, there's also the rule type that you can change it from. So these are tracks. That's everything over here. And then the marker and regions, you can change it so you can show those. You can also change the filter by the name, which is usually how I have it set up. So I, when I enter in a new one, it's going to go to where it's alphabetized. For color and icon, there really is no need to sort them by that. But anyway, let's go back to the filter. Let's go to uh, Z, which I just named it. So if I create a new track here and name it Z, you'll see nothing changes because it has no uh, color input and no icon. But so if you want to make a change to these, you can either go in and right click in and go to set color, or you can just go down to this little color panel right here and then select your color. Let's say we want it to be uh, pink. You can also change the color codes if you've found color codes before. You can also type them in right here if you find a color code online. And now let's change the icon. So if you double click here, it should pop right up to your track icons. If you ever need to find this, you can go over here to options and go to show Reaper resource path. And it will show you where it's located on your computer. You're just going to go into data and then you're going to go to track icons, which is different from toolbar icons. And then once you're in here, these are all your icons. You can copy and paste them from another uh, folder that you might have. You can download a bunch of these online. I've edited a lot of these myself just because, I, again, I'm a very visual person and I want them to look the way that I want them to look. And you don't have to do this. You can just use the ones that come stock or you can download some from the Reaper stash. Anyway, so let's go ahead and select an icon for this. And this is Z, so it means nothing, but let's go ahead and select something. Uh, let's select this one. So now it's going to have that logo associated with it at all times. And if you were to insert a new track and name it that, you're set up. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment down below if there's any other questions that you have. I'll be posting more and more Reaper tutorials about how to customize your Reaper and do all kinds of things. So if you guys want to learn how to do a quick little toolbar that's going to have all your VST instruments in it, I can show you how to do that. I have them set up for my different instruments that I use all the time. I also posted a video on how you can change your track height easily with just one click of the button. If you want to know how to do that, check out the video right up here. Thanks for watching the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.